E aí, meu gostosos, tudo bem? Or if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Ethan Sharkey and I bring out videos all the time. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, feel free to check them out. But today, we're gonna to be doing a special video. As you probably saw by the title, we are going to go through the top six reasons why you should live in Sao Paulo. This could be for the foreigners who, like me, could want to come and live here. So, as you guys know, I've lived here for about two years in total, a little bit over. I would like to say that I knew your culture pretty well. You know, I know the ins and outs. I know more than most foreigners would. I feel as if I'm in a position to give you the tea when it comes to living here in Brazil, or living here in Sao Paulo more specifically, and some reasons as to why. Now this video is based off my personal opinion and my personal experience. Um, I've broken down the topics into six individuals, um, just so that I can spam through them so that you guys get to know Brazil a little bit better. Or Sao Paulo, I keep saying Brazil, but Sao Paulo specifically. <laughs> All right guys, so let's jump into the first topic, the nightlife. Now, I've mentioned this in a video before about what I love about Brazil, so I feel as if there's no possible way I could keep it out. And if you're a lover of going out, um, of a nighttime, drinking, going to clubs, partying, whatever, I feel as if this is going to be very valuable to you. In Sao Paulo, the parties go too late. However, they also start late. So instead of being expected to, you know, pre-drink around 6 to go out at around 9 or 10 o'clock, you will plan to leave for the club at around 11 or 12 o'clock at night, which means that the party will go to typically 7 o'clock in the morning, typically. Um, some parties go later, some parties go before, but everything happens and operates later. I remember one of the first big night clubs I ever went to here, um, I thought pre-drinking was going to start at around 6 or 7, just like it does in Australia. However, I was very, very, very wrong. Instead, everybody kind of, you know, buys their drinks and they're pretty much all ready to have drinks at someone's house, like in a Scanza, at around like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and then they plan to head out between 11 and 1. Also, here in Brazil, the same as everywhere else, but it's very, very common here, is there is a very big difference between parties and clubs. Clubs are just like any nightclub, right? It's always there, it's always kind of the same thing. And then we have parties, uh, kind of just specific events that get held in uh, a space or a nightclub or a house. This is very, very common here. It's, be, it's very, very common that I go to a party and this party has been held in a house that has been hired or a rooftop that has been hired. These spaces specifically aren't clubs. This not only creates variety, but if there are no parties that you're interested in on the night, you can always drop back to your favorite nightclub that'll always be open. Another part about the nightlife is that the drinks are sold all night. The drinks will be served all night as long as there are drinks available to be sold. So therefore, unlike Australia when you kind of have to rush to the club just so that you know you can buy drinks before lockout, you know, here in Brazil you can buy drinks all night. And one more point about the nightlife as well is that Brazilian people love to have fun. Despite anything else, they love to have fun. Therefore, there are many, 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 many parties, like more than what you could imagine. There are many, many parties, and every single party, of course, has their own genre of music they play, which is, of course, split into, you know, the cultural music that Brazil listens to, so there could be, you know, funk music, pop, electronic. So going to these parties is pretty much something that everybody does. And it honestly makes the nightlife one of a kind. It is the people. Now, if you don't know anything about Brazilian culture, I will tell you now, something that you will realize almost straight away is that they are an extremely inclusive culture. They are very passionate about introducing you to their life. If you are a gringo or a foreigner, it's very, very, very common that Brazilians will take an interest in you. They will want to kind of ask you how your experience is. They'll want to know what you like, what you dislike, where have you been. It's almost like they're fascinated to see your perception of their country. I find a lot that um, Brazilians here in Sao Paulo, uh, they often try to do what they can to increase my experience or to enhance my experience here in Brazil. If there's something that I don't know, like, a, like there's a, a spot or a party or some kind of food, they will always find a way 
to kind of introduce me to this, whether that would be like, oh, what are you doing tonight? Let's go to here. Oh, you haven't been to this bar? Let's go to here. We want to show you, we want you to try some of the things that we're really accustomed to. This is something that's really beautiful about their culture and unique, I think. I feel as if I can't finish this topic about people unless I mention one of the main things, which is a lot of them are very sexy. Um, of course, all of these other points come before, but that's just something to top it off. Topic number four, the culture. Now, I could probably talk all day about the culture. However, what I'm gonna do instead is talk about some of the events that they have and some of the parades and things like that that happen here in Sao Paulo. So as a lot of the Brazilians know, Brazil has its fair share of music festivals. Now, there are music festivals for every single genre. So I can't even begin to name each specific one. Probably the biggest one here, correct me if I'm wrong, would be Rock in Rio. Um, I attended Rock in Rio last year, it was amazing, amazing. They have a lot of Brazilian artists, but they also have a lot of Western artists as well. So they have a lot of festivals. These include, you know, things like Tomorrowland, Lollapalooza, the list goes on. They also have a festival here that happens in June, it's called Festa Genina. It's kind of like a celebration of saints, so there's just a lot of like traditional music. I've been to one of the festivals before, or maybe a few times actually, and they kind of just celebrate this with their traditional foods, um, things that are very typical here. Carnival. Now, Carnival is known worldwide. This is no news to anyone who's watching this. However, Carnival is a very special time and it goes for about a week and a half, I think. I've been to two Carnivals since I arrived here in Brazil. Um, and it is a... Uh, <sighs> We have a lot of Brazilians that like Carnival just because it's a bunch of public holidays. However, the majority of the Brazilians, they love it. Because it's a kind of a time for them to go out, get messy, get on the streets, dance to their favorite music, etc, etc. And as I said about the nightlife before, the variety is huge. There's a huge, huge variety of uh, blockers. If you don't know what a blocker is, it's kind of like a truck that drives in the street and everyone dances behind it and it plays a genre of music. Um, I've only ever been to Sao Paulo Carnival. I know that I need to go to Rio. I think that'll be where I go next year. Um, but I also want to go to Salvador as well. However, I know that there is Carnival down south as well, like Florianopolis. I know that there is everywhere else. Also, I think it's important to add that in Brazil as a whole, they have the biggest colonization of Japanese people outside of Japan. Um, and so there are a lot of Japanese people here and also a big part of Japanese culture is infused in Brazilian culture as well. This is something I couldn't miss because where there is Brazilian cuisine and everything like that, there is also a huge amount of Japanese cuisine as well. And last of all, um, the Pride Festival. Um, I went last year and it is enormous. The Pride Festival here in Brazil, or the Pride Festival here, the Pride March here in Sao Paulo is the biggest in South America, in the whole continent. And this is the food and drinking. You know I've mentioned so many times that the food here is phenomenal and I stand by that, but you just need to know how phenomenal. Every single uh, state in Brazil has a food that's almost specific to that state. Everything here is delicious. When I came here, I was blown away with the amount of food that they consume. Meal deals. So with every single meal, there's rice and beans. With everything you eat, pretty much. Rice, beans, and a protein of some sort. So just meat. It's huge. But like I said, it's, it's healthy food you know make sure that you ask some Brazilians to have some traditional food they'll help you out and they'll bring you everything that you should try whilst you're here now Brazil has its own range of beverages as well here they have a classic caipirinha normally what's in that is like fruit and ice and sugar and stuff they all mix it up it tastes really typically you can get a caipirinha out with pretty much every single fruit that you can think of um, they'll do mixes or they'll do specific ones. The most common is lemon. They're beautiful as well. Try them when you're here. Something that they'll probably kill me for saying, but they have something called catuaba. It's pretty much just like a really, really, really sweet cordial that's alcoholic and people get wasted from that. It tastes okay. Um, but it's very, very popular for me at places like big, big, big parties like festivals or for things like carnival, super popular. Opportunities. Now, Sao Paulo specifically is a business orientated city. During the week, it's all work. All work, and then on the weekends is when they kind of let loose. Now, the opportunity that uh, foreigners can have here, if you can kind of adapt yourself with the language 
Um, your opportunities are endless, you know? Um, you can be a professional in your field anywhere. There are millions and millions of jobs. If you would want to come to Brazil and not work in your profession or if you would like to do something else, English teaching is something that you can consider. Brazilians often pay for, you know, Skype lessons or if they pay for, you know, just a conversation in person. XYZ, it's all available and it's money for you to live here for however long you want. And also, opportunity comes without saying Portuguese. It's always best to know a little bit, especially if you're coming here, even to just uh, travel and have a look around. Um, I would recommend learning just some simple phrases. Easy to find on things like Duolingo or on the internet. And city activities. Now, there are millions and millions of things to do here in Sao Paulo. You can go to things like markets. There's a huge market here called Mercado do Municipal. Um, now this, Market sells tons and tons of food, fresh food. The fruit there is the best I've ever tasted, and you can have it here with beer, etc. etc. It's just phenomenal. I would highly recommend going there. Their sandwiches are to die for. Um, a big thing here is parks. Now, there are loads. We have things like there are sunset parks where a lot of people go and watch the sun go down. The most popular one here, I think, is Ibiapuera. It's huge, it's green, it's massive, and you can hire bikes to drive around. On weekends, it's always packed. Now there are other parks here like Villa Logas and Aclimação, I think another one's called. Anyway, there's millions of them and they're beautiful. Another thing I need to mention here is that there are a lot of galleries and there are a lot of museums. Um, there are museums like now um, Maspi, uh, which you'll see. I'll put up some pictures. There are other museums like Pinacoteca and there's another one called MAM. But they look amazing. I've been to a lot of them. Um, you know, it really kind of shows their culture and then shows other things like they have art festivals, etc, etc, etc. It's very, very, uh, it's awesome. Polista Avenue in Sao Paulo is one of the main attractions here. If you ever see someone who's been to Sao Paulo, you will probably see a picture of them on this avenue at some stage. Um, it, on a Sunday, the whole thing is kind of shut off and people walk and ride their bikes. It's very, uh, it's a very social thing to do with you and your friends. A place called Batman Alley. It's Batman. Um, and this is kind of like a place where you can uh, look at all of the artwork that's like street, street graffiti, that kind of thing. It's amazing. I'll put some pictures up. I've been there. It's beautiful. You should definitely, definitely check it out when you're here. Now I can talk about some Paulo and the things that you can do here forever. And I know that I've missed many, many things, but I'm just telling you from my personal experience the things that I love the most about Brazil and about Sao Paulo specifically. Um, if you're thinking about living here, there's so much to do here as I just mentioned to you then. Um, also, if you're watching this video and you live here, you're Brazilian, please leave a comment down below. Tell me if you like this video and also add some things that I might have forgotten. Um, things that the gringos would love to read. Write it in Portuguese even, I'm sure that they would, um, they would love to check it out. Also, please be sure to like and subscribe um, and ring the notification bell. Now I'm bring out videos like this all the time, check out other videos on my channel as well. I'd love to hear from you, so follow me on all my socials that you can find in the description down below. Then as always, Shanshi, muito obrigado for being here. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in a few days time. Muito obrigado. Ciao.